name's Lori and I'm an artist who lives and works in the Eastern Sierra. I live in Tom's place and I work in Mammoth at the Makerspace. I'm the coordinator for the Mono County Library's Makerspace and along with my coworker Julia, we've been making kits and doing projects that people can pick up, take home and work on at their leisure because of course we can't have people in the space right now because of COVID. Um, one of the things I've been doing lately that I'm really enjoying is putting together a series of classes for um, Carissa and the Easter, excuse me, the Evolution of Storytelling Project, which is such an awesome thing where you get to tell your own stories. And my part has been the art part, making handmade books that will be illustrated by you in a variety of ways and a variety of different structures, the book structures. Starfold zine, zine which is short for magazine, um, accordion fold, we're gonna do mail art, I hope, at the end possibly around Valentine's Day. So that's it, I'm a printmaker. I love to carve on wood and linoleum and some rubber material and then print on paper and cloth and Sometimes it's animals, sometimes it's hybrid animals, humans. And I also love taking walks. So here I am outside in my neighborhood, seeing what's happening. Thanks, hope to see you guys soon. All right. So here we're going to, I'm going to adjust this. So we're looking down. And there we have it. Okay, so sewn binding zine. Sewn binding just means this is a fold of several, you know, eight and a half by 11 pieces of paper that has been, holes have been punched in it and sewn up. Now for ease of this project, I did not include holes and needle and thread. What you have is going to be one that is stapled with my fabulous long reach stapler. And just to show you some ideas, this is a zine that I love, this whole series from Little Atsu. And again, stapled in the middle. So it's a super simple way to make uh, a little booklet or zine you can reproduce in the copier and then just staple together and hand out to all of your friends and family. All right, so this is one I already finished in the way that you are gonna work on yours. You have your instruction sheet and this is just a fun way to get you started with everything. And it's based on Dada, and I'll tell you a little bit about that in a minute. You also have a bunch of um, images that I cut out, tore out of magazines, uh, et cetera, old books, and that's what you're gonna work with. That's what we'll do first is work on that bit. So I am going to cut out things, my trusty scissors, from this book that has been um, taken out of the system at the Mammoth Library because it got a little wrecked. So let me look at some of these fun things. Now, there are ways to, obviously scissors is the easiest. I could also use an X-Acto knife to cut as long as I put something behind here so that it didn't cut all the way through. Um, I could also tear, first of all, you know, and tearing is kind of an inch if you don't have scissors, in other words. You know, I you put your finger down and you tear around it. So that's another way. And you'll also discover that paper has a grain. So I can also tear it out this way. And that edge looks kind of cool. So your choice. If you have scissors, great. If you don't, great. Either way can work. Okay, so here's my guy. 
and I haven't looked him up yet, but I'm gonna say some kind of pterodactyl perhaps. Now, notice what happened when I was tearing. I tore off one of her feet and I tore off her tail. And this is the giant bug she's gonna get. So, but I, I don't care that I tore those off. To me, and I, I hope you don't care. I want you to just make this work however you want. Do not get upset if something gets torn or you cut something off, you just glue it back on. This is your book and you get to do what you want. Nobody's watching you. I wish I could, that we could be together, but of course that's just not happening right now. So one of the, I'm gonna show you about gluing and then I'm gonna talk a little bit about how to place things on the page so that it's interesting to look through. So, first of all, let's talk about page placement and then I'll talk about gluing. So, this book is the one I told you that I made. Now, don't worry about any of the writing at this point, but so here's a snake, an eel, excuse me, that I cut out. And oddly enough, I can never put anything on the very first page until I've done everything else. So this was an afterthought. But so here we go. So this now, you've got this page spread with the words that are gonna go here and the image all the way on that side of the page. Then the next one has an image way down here that's kind of tiny and the words go that way. But as far as just the images, we're just focusing on the images right now. Next page in the middle. And it's got a glued on head because I love doing that. Next page, a little bit here, a little bit here. And then later, later when we do the writing, that's where you can join the two pieces. And another one where it's up here on the upper left, down on the lower right. All the way on the right, blank on this side, except for a tiny bit where that overlapped, that owl overlapped and I glued it on to the other side. And then the last page is just something on the right. So that way when you go through, somebody reads through your book, it's not predictable. They're not going, oh, everything's right in the middle or everything's on the right side of the page. That can work as well, but I want you for this one to just sort of experiment. This one I put upside down, as you can see. So just have fun with that idea, like where each page, how it will be slightly different from the page before it and the page after it. Okay, here's my blank page. As I said, for some reason, and even when I buy a new sketchbook or a journal, I can't do anything with the first page. It, I don't know what it is, it's just a weird thing. So I'll do that later. First, I do the inner pages. So I have my creature and I'm gonna, I think I'm gonna maybe make her go this way because I, I want all of her little torn off bits, her little tail, and I want the bug. Now the bug, I don't know what I'm gonna do with the bug. The bug might wrap around. But, so this is gonna be my placement. Now I'm gonna take the little pieces off and set them aside and take her, move the book, Get out an extra piece of paper. This can be a magazine, it can be anything that you're just gonna throw away. Because what you're gonna do when you have your glue stick and you have your glue stick in your, in your packet, in your kit. This way you can use the glue to get all those little edges, which you aren't gonna do if you're being careful like on your dining, directly on your dining table. But this way I can go off and it's, you know, it's the, obviously the glue is gonna stick and I get all those little bits. So, that's why you should have some extra paper, and if not, just use the cover sheet. And you can use it, woo! Okay, so that happened, but I don't really care. All right, now I've got these parts glued. I'm gonna move that again so it's not in the way and I don't get glue on my cover. Bring back the book, and because she's the main part, I'm gonna put her this way and press down and then because that's gonna be in a corner I'm gonna have to really press and now her head look at her head oh there goes her head and I'm actually gonna keep it 
a little distance because I like the way that looks. All right, now if something like I see that her, oh, that was already open, ew. Okay, I see that her little snout here doesn't have glue on it, so I'm just gonna glue that down. And then just to make that fold clear, I'm gonna do that. This is where sometimes the glue will come up and you just glue it back down. Just for your info, you can also use double stick tape. Um, you know, you, I could even use um, some, you know, painter's tape to put that down if I wanted that showing. There are just many ways to put, all right, so now I'm gonna go and stick down her little lost bits here, her tail and her foot. So same thing, glue that, and you are gonna get glue on your fingers, and that's not that big a deal, unless you're like super fastidious. I am not. Move that again, bring back the gal. Now her tail, again, I'm gonna make it so that it's slightly offset from the tear. And then the same thing with her little, oh my God, I don't even know which way that goes at this point. There we are, goes like that. All right, so now I have my creature going across all the pages. Again, making it go across the crease is kind of hard. You just have to make sure you're gluing press and press on that side. <laughs> So um, after you've paused the video and put your own um, cut out, torn out goodies, then you should have a booklet a zine full of interesting things, juxtapositions, which um, I love that word, it means two things next to each other that don't necessarily go together. And so you have to make up kind of a whole new way to think about what you're looking at. So I decided to put some lips on the front of mine and I finally figured out what I'm gonna do, what I was gonna do with uh, that first page that always is a dread for me, but it's a sky scene, but I put it sideways. And then there's my gal and I decided I have a Vogue magazine near me and I just cut some things out of there. Just again, that juxtaposition, like what's she? doing with her. And then this page, the creature that she was going for with just a leg, because why not? And how different that page is from that page. And then there's another big gal by herself and kind of going in this direction, right? She's, she's, there's not much space here, which means she's heading off the page. Whether you Think about it or not, that's that's the way we um, envision this this whole page is that this creature is going off the page this way with a lot of space behind her. Next page, cute little thing. I decided to glue um, it upside down. And then again, a couple heads from my uh, Vogue magazine. Now I've got this big open space, this big negative space, meaning nothing's there. These are the positive images, and that's also fun to play around with. Next page just has this one woman from Vogue and a lot of space. And then the next one is a, looks like a pterodactyl, and I just liked the way it was the edge of the page, so I glued it up there. You can see a little bit coming there, and that's from Lizzo, my cutout from my Vogue magazine. I happen to like Lizzo. And then another little skeleton of a dinosaur. And then the last page is a little bit of that sky that I had from the first page, that same kind of coloring. For now, I could also put something on here, but I haven't yet. Don't do anything with the back page, just because I'll tell you what we're gonna do with that part, and it has to do with your instructions. So, uh, either now play around with your paging, or maybe you did before. All right, back to my original that I already did. Um, 
I assume by now you've written down all the requests on this page of instructions. Again, do not worry about that last one. We'll get there. So this, I decided to put the last thing I texted on the front. That was my, that was my title. So you can choose your title from any of those parts you wrote down. So one through seven, if you'd like that to be your title, one of those things, just pick one. All right, went through, I apologize, sir, said Elizabeth. Now, I don't remember now which book I was reading, but so you can see how now that text with this image sets up a whole like, what? Which is the point of doing little Dada -da books like this. This one, no need bread. Okay, that's one of my favorite recipes. Three cups of flowers, blah, 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 blah. So again, like why, why is this recipe, these set of ingredients with this guy? Um, this one is the favorite song. This was just happened to be that one. I don't even know what it's called at this point, but it's the, the refrain is there will be snacks. Which is just one of my favorite lines ever. Um, this one, try not to worry so much. That was me talking to my six-year-old self. And these were just some um, words, the words I liked. Edia Karen, they're these little creatures. Anamnesis, which is the remembering of things from a supposed previous existence. I love that one. And then penultimate, which means the next to the last, which is funny because it's on the penultimate page. And here's that text again that I decided would be my cover, um, the title of my booklet. I know it was a surprise to me too. So if you have all those bits, and then I also did some, you know, outlined this because I thought, why not? That was fun to make it look more like a, a title page or a cover. So for this last bit, on the back of your book, sketch a wee self portrait and sign your book. You should definitely sign your book. Now for the self portrait, this is what I decided to do. I drew my hands and then I put eyes in it. Uh, what else could you do for a self-portrait? You could choose your favorite color and your favorite shape. Maybe it's a circle and you could color that shape in with your favorite color. Um, what else could you do? It could be a portrait of your foot. It could be a portrait of your favorite shoes. Anything that you feel represents you. And even if it's just at this moment, remember, we're just having fun with this stuff. We're just playing around. So not everything you do has to be a masterpiece. We're figuring out how to do this. You can also, you can easily make another one, as you saw how easy it is to make. So for this one, just pick whatever your thoughts are right now at this moment. What is it that represents you and like I said, a color, um, a shape, your favorite shoes, your favorite coffee mug, your cereal bowl, anything, your, your favorite stuffed animal. I mean, I, I still have mine, but anyway. Um, so that's, that will be the last thing you do. And then you will have a finished zine that can be reproduced. I could take the staples out of this, lay this down on the copier. Now everything, unless I wanted to spend the big bucks, everything would come out black and white because I'm not gonna probably use a color copier for this. But it would still look pretty cool. And then I could give this as presents to my friends and family. So that's the idea behind most of the booklets and zines that we're making in this these, these classes that the fabulous um, Carissa has put together. I don't even know where to look on my phone right now. I'm so sorry. It's a new phone and I don't know where the camera is. I think it's up there. Okay. So, um, the other thing is we would love to get some feedback. I would love to see what you guys have created. Even if you just want to take a screenshot of, you know, or not a screenshot, sorry, just a shot of one of the pages in your book that you thought turned out well. 
I'd love to see what your self-portraits look like. I'd love to see what the cover looks like. Th this is, I know this is all hard because everything's zoomed nowadays, but we get so little feedback and contact from all you guys, and that's what we're really missing. So if there's any way you can share with us what you've done, we would love it so much. Uh, thank you for watching. And our next book will be um, an accordion fold book, which is pretty cool as well. So thanks for watching. Bye.